Now, as an F122 YouTuber, you might be surprised to know that I do play F122 quite a bit, and as a result, I have to put up with all the psychos in public lobbies, and it's really bad. If I had a pound for every time a random person crashed me out of a race, I honestly reckon I could buy myself a seat in F1. Today, though, we're going to be getting revenge on all of these drivers, not just for myself, but for everyone out there who at some point has been having a great time playing F122 just to be brutally taken out by a Maldonado fanboy. The plan was simple. I just had to create a public lobby, do a few races to fill up the lobby and spot all the dirty drivers and then quickly turn off assists and turn on simulation damage ahead of the Monaco Grand Prix and then repeat this with multiple lobbies until I feel like justice has been served. Make sure you watch at the end as I definitely think the last couple of races I did were definitely the funniest. We begin with the first lobby where a race in Baku really showed why I felt the need to do this video. In classic F122 multiplayer style, there was a huge lap 1 incident resulting in one poor driver taken off like a prime Mark Webber and myself somehow gaining 8 positions in just a few seconds as a result of this. There were clearly some Mazepin fanboys in this lobby, so following this race I did indeed quickly change the settings for the Monaco Grand Prix where the heavens opened and chaos was about to unfold. There weren't actually that many people in this lobby, but immediately multiple drivers DNF and I moved up into a podium place. I then moved up to P2 after this Red Bull was clearly just struggling and then at the end of the lap I took the lead after the leader pitted. And there we go, the plan seemed to be working and life was just amazing. But I then came across a back marker only on lap 2 who I knew from last race was a certified wet wipe. So I was very much enjoying watching him struggle in these conditions until that happened. My eagerness to get past him combined with his lack of car control meant that I was out on lap 2 which is very disappointing but we go again. In the next lobby I knew I had to be more careful in avoiding other drivers but it was kind of hard when there were just drivers all over the place like this and I somehow got a time penalty as well which was quite annoying. But I survived and carried on past three cars that all crashed into the same wall. And despite almost taking a minute to just get to the casino, I got into the podium places just a few moments later. I once again took the lead of the race at the end of the first lap, meaning the plan had gone perfectly once again. I was ready to just coast home while all the idiots in the lobby struggle to keep their car out of the wall. This was just going fantastically. What could possibly stop me from winning this race? Surely I will. I was now in a new lobby but with the same questionable driving. This time though I decided to change all of the settings for the race in Azerbaijan as there's still loads of walls around so I thought it could be just as good as Monaco. There was indeed absolute chaos on lap 1 but I quickly realised that I forgot to turn damage on because I am stupid. I swear there would have been so many DNFs as I gained 13 positions in just 22 seconds. Luckily it was still a big struggle for most of the lobby and I took the lead from Charlotte, uh, Hi, this stupid. Ferrari on the first lap. I ended up winning pretty comfortably but I couldn't help but wonder how much better it would have been if I'd actually remembered to put sim damage on. But we move on to the next lobby where everything started to fall into place. This next lobby was probably the worst of them all. There were some absolute sickos in these races, causing lots of incidents. One of the worst of these dirty drivers was that guy, Zio Lucinio, who just obliterated another driver behind me. After a lot of suffering, it was finally time for the Monaco Grand Prix. Great start by Andy Irvine, field up, look at field up, and into the wall, who was that? Coulthard, Coulthard, Coulthard into the wall. David Coulthard into the wall, will stop the race. They'll have to the red, they'll have to red flag it. Look, oh, this is quite appalling, this is the worst start for a Grand Prix that I have ever seen in the whole of my life. As you can see, there were just a few crashes at the start as I slowly made my way through and past turn one. I headed up the hill past a few more drivers who were clearly suffering and then just after I slightly hit the wall at this corner, I went past a driver that had clearly hit the wall a little bit harder than me. I was pleased to see it was the same guy who had been raining terror on this lobby since race one. And if you just join us and you miss out on any of the action and you're a SkyQ or a Sky Plus customer, you can press the red subscribe button down below to uh, catch up on all of the amazing action. Following all of the carnage of lap one, it was actually a very quiet race for myself after this. I was just chilling in P3 
while the two leaders seem to have a bit more pace than me. Eventually though, they seem to have had a collision which allowed me to move up to second place. And just like in 1996, only three drivers finished the Monaco Grand Prix. Finally, I actually decided to troll people from my Discord server. And the reason for that was because of this video I did not too long ago, where these people tried so hard to take me out in multiple different races. Even though I literally told them to do it, but still, I needed revenge. However, this was going to be no easy task. I couldn't just randomly go into my Discord and be like, Hey guys, let's just do a random race, but make sure you don't check the assist restrictions. So I had to construct a plan, which I called the plan. Here's what it involved. I went into my Discord and said something like, Hey, I want to do some races for a video where everyone can cut corners and wall ride, but you have to race cleanly. I then told them that we're going to do three races in total at Singapore, Canada and Monaco. The first part of the plan was all in place. All I had to do was just do the races in Singapore and Canada with the settings I had promised. And the reason for this was just so I could build up trust with everyone in the lobby and also to get them thinking that they can just slam into the walls to go faster. After these two races, I then had to pretend to lose connection to the lobby so I could sneakily set up a new lobby with no assists and simulation damage for the final race in Monaco without everyone seeing the restrictions updated message. The plan seemed to go perfectly and I was so ready to see what would happen at the start of this final race. Okay, here we go then. I'm starting from the back of the grid. No one knows that there are no assists and simulation damage. But let's see what happens. Oh god. Oh, there's already some spinners. Oh, there's some struggles going on ahead. Oh no. Oh god. Oh god. Okay, well, we've already got a few people out of position. Oh, there's been a big crash. There's been an absolutely massive crash. Oh, the Mercedes. What is going on? Oh my god. No, don't hit me. Oh no, I've got puncture. What is going on up here? Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. What is this? Okay, we've now got a bit of a traffic jam. Yeah, I've got puncture, which isn't ideal actually. Oh, and there's, a, there's an Alpha Tower that is struggling a bit. Okay, we are going to go into the pits now so we can actually get rid of our punctured tyre. Okay, there's only nine people left. We finally don't have a puncture. <laughs> Uh, and so we're just going to try and push and see if we can catch up to some people. Fun fact, I did actually practice this in time trials. Although I actually practiced with reins, it's a lot harder. So I'm ready for this. Uh, although our gaps ahead are not looking too great. 10 seconds to Luigi. And then another 50 seconds to the beast ahead. Oh, Luigi. Oh, Mario's going to be gutted about that. Oh, the, oh there's been another DNF, so there's only 7 people left. And, I mean, I'm on the second lap. I think there's people on the third lap already. Oh, there's people pitting as well. This is our chance to catch up. If we can win this race, that would be beautiful. All right, we're up to P4. We've got to try and get onto the podium. That would just make this absolutely amazing. And we've got a good pace at the moment. I feel fairly quick. Oh, I almost did the worst ball. And I've lost the front wing. Front wings are kind of overrated anyway, I think. Oh my God, look at that. Someone's in the pits. So we are up into a podium position. We started from last. We had a puncture the whole of the first lap. And there's been another person that's retired from this session. Only six people left now. And I've got about two laps to go. And it's looking good so far. Uh, I feel quite bad for everyone. <laughs> I can't believe I've done this as well. I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. Oh my God, that is a slightly dangerous position. And oh my god, he's retired as well. That is, there's only five people left now. Oh, there's cars ahead. Uh, although I don't know if they're a lap down. Oh, one of them is. One of them isn't though. All the Red Bulls hit the wall. Whoa! Oh my god. Oh, he's out. We're up to P2. And there we go. That is the end of the race. Fair play to that guy that won. Because uh, this is no easy race to win. And there we go. We have survived. The race from absolute hell. Starting from P19, we finished P2. Oh my god, I feel so sorry. To everyone in this race watching this now, I'm so sorry. I'm very sorry. That is what you will get for taking me out in Hungary, even though I told you to do that. Still, that felt good. That felt good. Uh, just a, a few DNFs. It is kind of like 19. Is it 1998 or 1996 all over again? Despite the hundreds of crashes, there were still more drivers that survived that race than Tottenham have trophies in the past decade. But anyway, that's going to be all for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like or something like that. I don't know. But yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. <laughs>